And, um, the FGN's um, COVID-19 funds and the donations and how, you know, mm -hmm. it has been spent was yep. something that was of interest to Serap and a number of other bodies. And so to speak well, so that we have uh, Kola Wale Uluadare, who is Deputy Director of Serap. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, you have received that information from the federal government. It would seem that Serap is not completely satisfied. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes, we are not satisfied because the details, uh, the information provided is not detailed enough and it does not cover the scope of our initial um, FY request with code. And that is why we were uh, reaching again to the Accountant General to provide further details under the Freedom of Information Act. What so, sort of details yeah. are you looking at here? Now, we are looking at, if you recall, from the information provided by the Accountant General, he had provided details of some inflows and outflows. And uh, part of that inflows uh, concerns 34 billion era by the federal government. And of course, we want to know the source of those funds, uh, what makes that the resources that combine together to fund those funds, and whether it was appropriated or not, which is a clear directive for the presidential, from the president, on how COVID-19 funds are to be expended. And of course, some of the details of those projects that the money was spent on, for instance, the presidential tax force, uh, from the letter from the Accountant General was um, uh, spent a total of 22 billion. We need details of that. Also, the one that the Air Force uh, was allocated to the Air Force, and also about 7 billion naira that was given to the United States. Those details are not captured in all in this response of the Accountant General. And most importantly, there is nothing that states the specifics of the beneficiaries of all these intervention on funds and the critical funds spent um, on PPEs for health workers who are the front line of battling COVID 19. You know, what, what occasioned, what spurred you to, you know, ask for these details? Did you see some discrepancies or, or what? what? What really pushed you? No, well, as part, we did that as part of our work. We did that with another organization, Connected Development. We did that as part of our work of ensuring transparency and accountability in the the fight for the socioeconomic rights of Nigerians. And, that, that, uh, and I think that uh, that's something that can be understood, given the antecedents of what we've seen in Nigeria over the years. So it's not important, it is not only important to that budget, funds are budgeted to fight COVID-19, but it's very important to make sure that those funds are accounted, accounted for and they are spent in a transparent manner, which is, of course, one of the principal uh, objectives of government. So, so, by the freedom of so you're saying that when you get this information, you're not going to say, well, maybe this was too much to be allocated to this particular sector or this was too small? Is that what you're saying? As part of what we do, advocacy campaigns is part of what we do, both at government in form of advisories and citizen education. So getting the fuller details will give us that uh, the ability to, to analyze and come up with a position either as to whether the funds are well spent or what we think. We are, we are Nigerian citizens that make up Sarah. And of course, we are equal stakeholders in the Nigerian project to advise government and to advocate whether we think things are properly done or not. But we cannot make that analysis of being objective without full details. And that is why the Freedom of Information Act is a good tool in this instance to make sure that citizens have that information. All right. So just before you go, it appears as though what they released is it. I mean, they, it doesn't appear as though they're going to release any further details. So assuming that were the case, Will Sarah equally challenge and say, no, we want the fine details? Of course, of course. We're entitled to it under the Freedom of Information Act. And we're entitled, to score, of course, to approach the court under Section 20 of the FY Act to enforce our rights. So if we don't have these details, so we'll, we'll do the needful. But I see no reason. And it, 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 it doesn't stand to reason either. Why government will be in court defending a court action by citizens, merely asking for information. So I, I really believe we'll get the information we, we require. You know, on a final note, just as we round off, speaking about information, how has it been really getting information from government? Because for some people, it's, it's been a tug of war. How has it been for you? It's, 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 not, it's not been good. And I, I would rate this government on transparency and accountability. I would give them less than a pass mark. And that is based on our initiatives on freedom of information request. This year alone, uh, we've sent out more than 200 freedom of information requests. And we've gotten just few responses. And more often than not, the responses are in the negative. And what does this speak about transparency and accountability, which, of course, is one of the core purposes of government. And so it's, it's uh, looking at the FYI at Section 89, even empowers the Attorney General to be that oversight ministry. And it's funny to see the same Attorney General in court defending uh, the, the citizens uh, the, not uh, providing the, uh, information to citizens. So it's, well, it's not it's not the positive. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a long conversation, but we have begun. We hope we'll be able to sustain this and get all the facts out. Thank you very much. Kola Wale Uluadari is Deputy Director of Serap. Thank you so much for your time.